Whoa, everybody. Looks a little bit like the horizon's going out that way. But it doesn't matter. This is Tim. Thank you, Tim. For living there, Mess in Tenerife. Thank you for everybody. Oh, sorry. With uh, the look. At the camera over there. It's the phone. It's yeah. Crazy. She can't. Hello. She can't see very well, I'm afraid. Hello. This is the microphone. This is just for syncing up this microphone. Okay. okay. So this will probably be the one you're hearing most of. Okay. Okay. So thank you everybody who's uh, been um, asking me online in Facebook and on YouTube if we're okay. We are okay. Nothing much has changed. In fact, the balcony banter is just the same every day, isn't it, really? Yeah. We're getting up later and we're getting fatter. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to the doctors tomorrow with my shoulder. It's still not right. It's in the nerve trapping, I think. And they give me tablets and stuff to help with the pain, but I really need something to to get it done, right? Maybe a referral to a chiropractor or something like that. Or, uh, I don't know, we'll see tomorrow. But I'm also gonna ask her if she'll give me a, a prescription for going for a walk so that I can show to the police if I'm stopped to say that I am medically need to exercise more because I've put on a lot of weight, you know? Haven't I, kid? Yeah. I don't go down the pub anymore, but I've got a few cans in the fridge, you know, and it's too easy just to nip to the fridge and get your 50 cent can instead of your 150 beer. So it's costing me less, but I'm drinking three times as much. <laughs> Chris is on a bike. She's uh, keeping fit that way. And, uh, but we're, we're eating quite well, aren't we? Yeah. We're eating quite well. well. Yeah, too well, maybe. Especially today, because we're going to have Rindrulade. Rindrulade. With finger noodle and blaukraut, which is like a red cabbage apple, apples and red cabbage and onion and finger noodles is like a potato dough that you make with grated potato boiled potato and potato starch it's like a like a dough and uh, roll it into finger sized pieces and fry them in butter <laughs> oh my god are you even saying that i'm getting fatter <laughs> So that's going to be good. <laughs> and uh, with that, we're going to have these rindralad, which is a thinly sliced piece of beef. And it's covered with um, mustard. mustard and pickled onions. gherkins and onions. And traditionally, there's bacon in there, but I didn't buy any bacon. So I've got a little bit of serrano ham I'm going to do on mine. Chris doesn't want that on yours, do you? I'll just do them on all. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it on all and she can pick out what she don't want. And then it's rolled up and then tied with butcher string. And then it is smored in a sauce on top of the oven, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's not in the oven, it's, uh, it's on, the, on the top of the oven mm -hmm. in a sort of a brown, I'm not saying brown, a sort of a dark sauce. How do I make the sauce? Do I need dark beer now? Red wine? No. I'll have, to, I'll have to look that up at which we've got the sauces. Oh, we're going to call Mutti. Mutti, the Bavarian Mutti, she'll know how to make Grindraladen. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we are okay. Uh, I am going to cut this on the computer, but I'm, all, I'm, I'm not going to cut the, uh, a lot. And because my me, me shoulder's starting now because I'm in the wrong position. I'm, I'm all tense, you know. Sometimes I think I'm a teepee and sometimes I think I'm a wigwam. Mm -hmm. I must be too tense. Too tense. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was uh, what we got to do. A little joke. So the weather today is around about 24 degrees in the shade. Uh, the wind has changed direction twice today. So I don't know where it's coming from really. Not really cloudy skies. It would be a beautiful day out if we could go for a walk, but we can't. And for all of those of you stuck in colder climes, Stay safe. For all of those of you stuck in warmer climes, or it might look like it's becoming spring, don't go out to the park. Don't go out to the park. Just stick, stick with it for another three weeks. So we've been locked down now for another three weeks. So stick with it for another three weeks and that won't give the virus anywhere to go. If you're saying, oh, so this, let's go and meet up with Bill and Fred and John and Mary, then uh, basically what you're actually doing is putting them at risk, not yourself because as long as you act as if you already have it and don't want to give it to anybody else, then that's the best way to go. So don't say, oh, I'll be all right if I'm just meeting these people or I'll be all right if I stay two meters away. Don't think of yourself. Just assume you've already got it and you don't want to give it to anybody. So that's the thing.
Anyway, enough of the doom and gloom. Um, we haven't really done anything, really. I've been yeah. binge watching some TV. You? Yeah, me. Yeah, late at night. So I binge watched. Um, oh, what was it? Um, Manifest was the last one I binge watched. This is a great uh, science sort of fictiony type thing, with a little bit of uh, police work in there. So it's a, it's sort of a police thing, but with a really weird twist. Manifest. There's two two series on whatever Netflix or whatever you've got. I don't know what it's on because we get it from this other guy, don't we? I don't know where he gets it from. And the other one I've been uh, binge watching is um, <laughs> V. So it's on. There's two series now. I don't think series two's finished yet because it didn't finish the last one I watched. So V, which well, is the old. Screaming. There's lots, lots of screaming on that one, was there? Yeah, maybe. Just let me sleep. <laughs> but the thing is, this V was an old throwback to a 70s uh, science fiction. And um, I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm not, there's no spoilers in this, but there is lots of twists and callbacks to the 70s version. So if you watched it in the 70s, it's totally different. But uh, there is sort of callbacks to it, so that'd be quite interesting. Uh, American series, obviously. But uh, what else is there? What did I watch last night? <laughs> I watched Dirty Rotten Scoundrels for some reason last night. That's why I was late in bed. I watched Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, yeah. the original, yeah. I know there's a new one out, but I watched the original with uh, Michael Caine and Steve Martin. Okay. That was good. So, uh, what else? We've been keeping in touch with our daughter. And if you're watching Daughter, great job. Don't go to uh, any barbecues. She's in Germany. And uh, all of you in Britain, don't go to the park. And uh, we'll look after yourselves. I also wrote on Facebook um, the other day, and it wasn't an argument, but it was a guy who was saying, who was passing around this, this meme about a dollar a pint and Sangra for 550 and uh, look after the small businesses, basically what he's saying, you know, don't go all inclusive to the hotels. Look after the businesses because it's all cheap here. And I don't think it's going to be cheap. I don't think that when we reopen that Tenerife is going to have the same clientele base as what we used to have. I think there's going to be less people coming. Uh, I do believe that some of the businesses that were here will probably not not be here at the end of the summer. Uh, it's unfortunate and it's uh, it's a terrible thing to say, but I don't think that some of the businesses were in a position to ride this out. And I don't think that uh, every business will be saved. So that means that the offer is going to be restricted. And what happens with a restricted offer is you get better quality and higher prices because only the good places survive. And so I believe that uh, Tenerife might change now. Well, I mean, it's been changing for the past four years. With you, know, you couldn't build any three-star hotels anymore. You could only build five-star. So I think the government wanted to up the quality like they did in Mallorca and Ibiza. Um, I don't know how good that's going. So any of my friends in Ibiza or Mallorca, if you're watching, did that work? And uh, so I don't think that we're going to have the same clientele. And if we increase the spend per visitor on the island, it can only benefit us. We'll get better quality and um, you'll be able to enjoy, enjoy yourself more. Uh, unfortunately, it will price some people out of the market. You know, it will become a, a more expensive place to come, but with better quality offer, I think. Um, I don't think anybody's working towards a lower spend visitor. You know, I mean, I don't think that will be economically viable for the island. So you've got to see it as a business as well. It's the tourism business and not the tourism present. So I think that the businesses are going to be getting together and saying, look, if we up our quality and reduce the numbers, then obviously the prices are going to uh, go up. The advantage of that is, is that the workers here will probably end up getting a decent wage. So that's another thing that uh, is a sort of a prediction on my point. I may be wrong, you know, maybe 50 cents a pint by the time you all come back. Who knows? Anyway, 
So, because Christina's now got a mouthful of water, <laughs> I'm going to say this you is. Want me to <laughs> say so, I'm say this is Tim. And this is. For living with MS in Tenerife, signing off. Uh, bye. bye. <laughs>